All right, welcome to class 18, the elusive class 18. So for the last several years, when we cover this topic, um, or when we tried to cover this topic, there's a snow day or something gets in the way. And so now, and usually it's one of the, it's the one that, the first one that I choose to cut when there is a time to cut something. Not because it's not important, but it's a, it is sort of a niche uh, type of situation where you have an additional acceleration term. And we do refer to it in particle kinematics when dealing with polar, um, with, with uh, polar notation or polar, uh, excuse me, polar coordinates. When dealing with polar coordinates, we know that we've, we've uh, encountered Coriolis acceleration. The bottom line with Coriolis acceleration is two things need to be present. They need to have um, what we uh, an angular velocity and a relative velocity taking place. Um, we'll see here in the next slide that what we found before, we've seen this before, we had a 2r dot data dot, if you'll recall that, right? That r dot and that theta dot were the two ingredients that were needed to create an ex extra acceleration term. Um, you'll also notice there's another acceleration term right in here. That one is the same thing as our r double dot, right? So that means uh, not only do we have um, this rigid body, but often we're looking at a point on the rigid body that's also moving. We'll see where there's scenarios uh, other than just that. Um, but that's that's the basic idea. And the rest of the terms for the acceleration, you'll notice, are all the same. So everything up to right here is actually the acceleration of a rigid body. But if you have a relative motion on a rigid body, then we have um, this Coriolis acceleration. And the big idea is in this figure right here, where Coriolis acceleration is experienced if you're on this rotating uh, platform and you were to be walking and starting to walk radially. That means we're walking out that way. So you're, you have a velocity uh, uh, coming outwards. Um, and as you start to get out, we're going to feel another acceleration term that's going to be uh, pushing you around. So um, th this is uh, uh, the figures that I'm placing out here. Um, to, to there's what you'll be missing in class 18 assumes that you're going to be missing this. I guess I made this, uh, I, I missed that when I was making these slides because I did think that we were going to finally have this class. Um, things get a little bit more complicated when the acceleration, when there is a point moving on the rigid body and we want to account for that relative motion. In order to explain why, let's compare the acceleration that we used uh, we just use rigid bodies to acceleration for a particle in polar coordinates, right? So that's that's really what I just did. It's like so so far this is the equation that we had for this situation, but now over there, if you recall from particle kinematics, we had an uh, in the radial direction, we had an r double dot, we had a minus r theta dot squared, and then in the um, e theta direction, as you'll recall, we had r times uh, theta double dot, and we had two times r dot times theta dot. Well, the terms that we had over here, this is the same term as this term right here, where we have r and theta dot squared, where here we have omega squared uh, times r, and you have a minus because it's pointing uh, towards the center of rotation. Here, once again, minus because it's pointing towards the center. And then um, over here, we have an r uh, theta dot, double dot. That's the same thing as this term right here. There's no corollary term um, here for this because um, the, 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 this was treated like a fixed reference point right here. But, uh, but now we could um, have a situation where there is some additional motion on the rigid body. And when that happens, these uh, uh, other two terms will appear. And so that extra ingredient, we refer to this, uh, to this one right here as the Coriolis acceleration. And the funny part of this is the toilet. Um, and I've also already mentioned here in the bottom line up front, this uh, 
best example, best simple example of Coriolis acceleration is to be walking on this merry-go-round um, on this moving reference frame. And, and that's another instance where, um, on, or another uh, phrase that you should associate with Coriolis acceleration is a moving reference frame. A rotating reference frame will, will uh, create um, Coriolis acceleration. One instance where this is a real thing is the motion of uh, hurricanes. That actually, they, because the Earth is rotating, that will affect the direction of the rotation of the, um, uh, uh, and there will be a difference of rotation for hurricanes, and I think they're called something else in the, uh, is, it, is, it, is it called a typhoon, I think, in the Southern Hemisphere? Or maybe that's just on the, uh, on uh, different in the west versus the east. Well, anyway, um, the, their rotation will change uh, depending on which side uh, or, or which uh, whether it's uh, on the um, northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. But toilets do not change direction. That's it's too slow of a motion. The Earth's motion is too slow to actually affect which direction water drains in a toilet or in a sink. Uh, any any a little uh, initiation to get uh, some stuff rotating, it, it, the fluids to start rotating in that direction. It could just be like uh, uh, just a defect or a small imperfection in the um, in the drain will start some of the particles moving and the other particles will start uh, gaining some rotational momentum and start uh, draining in that. So um, just uh, be aware that that toilet thing is a, is a false uh, uh, thing. So, but Coriolis acceleration occurs when you have an R dot and a theta dot. And so these uh, right here show the new versions of these equations. Uh, well, here for the, and, and we could also have the same thing going on. We can have a relative velocity uh, component that we need to uh, worry about as well. So, w w you know, in essence, what we're talking about in the most simple of terms is we have a particle that's decided that it's going to start moving and it's going to have a, um, a, a, a V rel that's on the rigid body and it's going to have an a, an, an a rel right there so that's the relative motion so that's the r dot and the r double dot so right here but this is the crazy guy that shows up and we already went through um, some of the explanation in the particle kinematics of why this takes place um, because um, if for, well the, i think the best explanation is that the the uh, reference frame or the uh, uh, coordinate system that we use in, in when we're doing polar coordinates is actually translating or and rotating i should say it's rotating it's moving so that creates uh, these extra terms when we're taking the derivative of the velocity uh, here's some real instances where Coriolis acceleration, um, they're not too uh, complicated, but in mechanisms, if we, uh, we usually, the links usually, typically, um, maintain the same length, they're rigid. But we can have instances where maybe we have a joint that actually allowed some, slot, some sliding uh, to take place. So it can rotate and slide. So that will create some acceleration. Now, this actually, this mechanism right here now actually has a second degree of freedom. So there would be something else to need to be able to uh, control this a lot. This is, gen this is one over here, just a single degree of freedom, which means one input motion will determine the motion of the rest of the thing. In this case right here, you would need something else to decide uh, what the position or the motion was going to be of this uh, bar. But down here, here's some um, simple instances uh, where we have um, this rotating. So this is sliding and rotating, and therefore that means that, we're, that this thing is actually kind of physically changing length so that there is, we could think of that as the R dot or the R double dot because this uh, link uh, is no longer a rigid body, although it is rigid. The the length of it uh, changes. And uh, you could think of like in this uh, bicycle air pump right here, we have the same thing going on right here where this guy right here, it, its linkage it act, does change with uh, time. So um, that was the lecture portion of this. And I'll do some of the examples in, um, in a separate video.
because that's the way that I was going to break it down anyway.